All right, I'll hand it over to you then, Safan. All right, thank you, Dixon. So, hi, everyone. Today, we would like to like do a demo about deploying models in ZML, moving from a local dep uh, model deployer into a hugging phase, which would be a custom step that we will do that with their model repository. So, let me first share my screen. So first, like before starting demoing anything, maybe we should talk about like what is model deployment. Basically, model deployment is all about extract like checkpoint from experimental cycle, which like when you train and like try different hyperparameters stuff like that, and like take it from that cycle and make it ready to move to another cycle, which will be like when that model integrated into a new environment and used to create like uh, decisions based on real world data. And probably like model deployment is the biggest engineering task in ML model lifecycle because like other stuff are more related to data scientists rather than ML engineering. When do we actually like in ZML, we have this stack component called model deployer which actually tries to simplify the work for the users. So like you can, if it's like locally, like MLflow integration, you can just install MLflow and it will take care of almost everything. And if it's like remotely in a production grade stuff like key server cell down, then you need to specify like and connect your model deployer stack with like your actual uh, cell down core or key server deployment. And then it's just basically the same process as MLflow. So when to use actually like MLOps uh when to use actually like model deployer in your ml ops pipeline will first make trained ml model available for use in other systems and application so we can't actually keep loading the model every time and to run a prediction that would be a good idea in a batch like environment or like in batch settings but otherwise we need a real-time settings to do that the other the other thing it should uh is like we want actually to use the model deployer to check the model in a local environment before um, shipping it into production. And this is very really important to make sure like everything is work, working fine. And maybe the third one, why you want model deployer is to scale your deployed ML model using a, a production grade framework such as Silicon Core or Keyserve. How to use it in your ZenML MLOps pipeline? Well, basically we have so far three integrations, MLflow, which works for local environments, Silicon Core and KeyServe for sort of like Kubernetes environment. But I think there is sort of like a missing point here, which is like for the users that does not want actually to configure their Kubernetes, like and the stuff like that's huge. And at the same time, they want their models available to run prediction predictions on them outside of their local settings. And like, for now, there is no integration for that in Cinemat, but like there is uh, one in progress, like there is an open PR for that, but like that's not our discussion for today. And there is actually a new way, which is using the Hugging Face platform and the model repository. And to do that, we can actually create these steps, which is like a custom ZML steps that can take the checkpoints of trained model within a ZML pipeline, upload it into uh, model repository and like make it available to use the inference API to run on it. <laughs> Sorry for that. So our local MLflow use case, the base one looks something similar to this. We will have like an import step, then a normalizer. After that, we will train uh, our model, evaluate it. And then we have something called deployment trigger, which like we see if after the evaluation, that model pass a certain threshold. If it does, then we can uh, deploy it locally. If it does not, we will just ignore this step. And for the inference pipeline, for like the local use case, we have an inference importer, which just basically try to import uh, what we call test set to run like some prediction on it, do a predict preprocessor based on that data, load the service, which is like the deployed model, because like now we are calling it service and then run pre the predictor, which will basically feed 
that pre-process data into our service loader and give us the predictions. But once we have actually like seen that, we will be moving to a new pipeline, which is like more advanced and uses the hugging phase stuff. And it will be really similar. We, we will not like change to another new pipeline or anything like that, but we will try to do the same stuff. The only difference here is that we're gonna add a hugging phase model upload, which will take the checkpoints that we trained and like sort of upload them to a specific model repository that we select. And for the inference, it's just similar thing, but this time we're gonna have a hugging phase predictor, which is a step that actually load an, a sample of images that we have locally and uh, send them through the inference API, hacking filter uh, inference API to give us some results. So let's get into the demo. Maybe let's, let me do this. <coughs> so let's see, we're gonna actually try to run the, the example that have everything on it, including the hugging face deploy. So our pipeline looks something just like how we describe it. Importer, normalizer, trainer, evaluator, deployment trigger, model deployer, and hugging phase deployer. And for the inference, it's the same thing. And like now, let us maybe do. So we're gonna try run this pipeline. Once that is like, try to start running we actually have this stack which is called like local ml flow stack and it has uh two main compo extra components rather than default one which is like ml flow tracker and ml flow deployer so the good use case about this is that like we can actually have our ml flow model deployer and tracker to do everything manually and like track our experiments and everything and even test our model locally and at the same time we can have the same version that applies locally into a remote environment, which is like in this case, hacking phase API. So now our models start training. Now that our model will start, start training, maybe let's take a look into what we call the hacking phase uploader or deployer. <laughs> So as you can see, it's a very simple like code that first it will be getting the model from the train step. This is the TF Keras model. Try to save it into a local folder. In this case, it will be a folder called models. And then using the hacking phase hub uh, API, we will try actually to upload this exact folder and all the files that we need into our repository. And like once that is done, we will move to what we call a hacking face predictor. And like what that will try to do is actually just use the same code that hacking face provide us and do it within a step and then iterate over a bunch of images within our test images to see the predictions. Maybe let's to make it like more interesting, let's try to create this from by the way, this. This has been deployed, the, uh, the local model for the hugging phase one. Maybe let's try to create a new model from the model repository. So we're going to make it public and create the model. Now that this is created, we can go back to our, what we call it, deployer and change the repository into XML MNIST demo to change that. The other thing that we need actually to have here is these two files, which is very important like for hacking phase to, to understand exactly how it's gonna be making that model ready to use. The first one is config.json, which like explains what are the different classes we have and like how the return result will be. And the other one, will be the readme which have like tags for what type of model is this and what data set, data set it's used so now that's like we have this one maybe let's try to run this again 
So as we can see now, we have no file in the ZML MLS table. And like once we try to run this, actually it start like training normalization and everything. Let's see if this was, oh, it's not done yet. It will be done in a few seconds. Like once that like that step responsible for deploying our checkpoints is done, we will see that we have a new file here. Or well, as we can see, we just uploaded it in less than a minute. That have like saved model and like keras metadata and all other stuff that we did. And right away the hacking phase will be able like to detect the model and make it ready for use. Maybe we can try something here. First, let's try. Not sure if it's ready or not yet for inferences. Oh, model is loading. OK, so we have actually uploaded an image of two, and we got our result. So the model is ready. And at the same time, we have actually like in the pipeline we have run we used three images one for nine two and zero and we can see that it got the result exactly right in our pipeline and if we take exact uh, if we see this step which is like called the predictor this is actually the local one that used the local mlflow deployer and with xenaml we can actually do something like model deployer see list of deployed model that we have locally. And for the one that are in Hacking Face, we can find them in our like Hacking Face account. So we can see that we have one deployed model using the uh, pipeline step name called MFLOW model deployer and the pipeline continuous deployment pipeline. So this is basically like how easy it is like to move on from a local model deployer that uses MLflow into something like hugging phase and have like our model ready to take any predictions. And for that step called a hugging phase predictor, we actually just need to copy this one in order to like to make it in a step in order to start running predictions. That's it like for our demo. I hope like you have enjoyed this and please feel free to ask any questions. If you have any.